For our final topic, in less than two weeks, the music video This Is America by Donald Glover, a.k.a. Childish Gambino, has garnered 162 million views on YouTube alone and sparked a new debate about race and gun violence in America. Paul, I'm not going to ask you about the song, but what did you make of the video and the representations in it? I, I'll start by saying I think one of the problems is is, is we, we have a... In, in all, all, all issues of difference of whatever kind and, and confrontation within society, we ignore the base realities and deal with a gloss, you know, like oh, we're all fighting for equality. And of course, that's rubbish because we're not all fighting for equality. There's a lot of people fighting against it. And so there's so many superstructure issues that are not dealt with. This deals with them. And that's why I think it is, it is brilliant. As, as a piece of pop culture that's political, insightful, challenging, uh, absolutely creative in dealing with contemporary society, American history. Uh, I, I look up all the, I'd look up all the videos on what every little bit of it means, all the, the kind of props, what they're saying, all of the references to kind of contemporary society and the past. And absolutely brilliant. I think it's a really good song. I'm a big fan of Donald Glover, uh, Charles Gambino. Uh, the only thing I hold against him is his move into Star Wars, which, uh, you know, we all make mistakes, but hopefully it will pay well so he can go and do some other decent stuff. Uh, uh, but I think, oh, you can tell I'm not a fan of franchises, except James Bond. Uh, but I think it, it it's a confrontational, challenging piece, and you need that where everything else is kind of uh, wallpapered over Let's have a little pick behind the, the crack here and there. I, I like the music. I like Donald Glover's stuff. I think his other videos. I think it's he's using the same director who's directing a lot of Atlanta. And I think there's some really creative stuff that Donald Glover's doing in his TV series Atlanta. Whole episodes where the main character isn't in it, which is just absolutely brilliant. And they're just random conversations between like a couple of black blokes in a barber shop. It just and he's not in it. And it's, you know, it's about him. So I think it's it's a challenging, confrontational piece. And I think you need more and more of them, particularly in societies that are increasingly disintegrating. And I include Britain and a lot of European states in that, Italy particularly at the moment, as we'll see, as that's going to develop. So I think it, it was irredeemably excellent. <laughs> Irredeemably excellent, uh, Francine. Um, is this the video for Trump's America? Oh, God, I completely agree with that analysis. I can't add anything insightful. I completely agree with that. And yes, I think in Trump's America, we absolutely need videos like this. It's, it's fundamental. Um, um, it's so disheartening so frequently to think about the world in which we're living in right now, that this type of video is very powerful. And actually... It's important to communicate with people in a way that, um, if you like, we've become used to um, being more receptive to as a society. So I think it's important not just to do sort of elitist intellectual messages. This type of like video is powerful because it can address a wide audience. And the amount of analyses I saw on the internet from people really wanting to understand what the video was conveying, I think it is also important. It makes people think. So it was almost like a little lesson in, um, in understanding cultural problems. So fabulous. I completely agree with you. Indeed. Uh, I saw that a video analysing this film and the, the symbolism in this film has got 11 million views. I mean, it, <laughs> I mean, it, clearly, it clearly is telling us something. Miro, um, of course, this film is, is, is layered with symbolism. But allow me to just sort of push back against this general positivity uh, for this um, uh, video. Yes, it discusses uh, black on black violence. It does allude to America's love of guns. But why is this happening now? Why is a video like this coming out now after eight years of Obama? After eight years of whether you like it or you don't, symbolic, representative change in the top political post of the United States. Isn't this video a return to narrative? It's almost as though, and you can see it in other areas, there's almost an attempt to say, Obama's in a box, he's gone, push that to one side, let's go back to this normal narrative of black people in danger, America can't change, white supremacy, etc, etc. And the film does end with Donald Glover being chased, or Childish Gambino being chased with that sense of terror in his, in his eyes. So, um, 
what do you make of that? Is this a is this a return to narrative? The idea that hope, hope and change was just a temporary uh, phenomena, and we've gone back to business as usual. Well, see, that's how I saw the end because I saw, when I saw the video, which, um, and I am a fan of, of Donald Glover's film. I, unlike Paul, I am looking forward to Star Wars, and then, and, and Glover's portrayal of, of as being quoted a pansexual character, which will be fascinating to see how they're going to. Uh, dis- display that in Hollywood formula, but what was quite interesting was at the end of the film that you know the running scene, and it's a question, and I know that people have now anal- analysed it in terms of uh, you know similar to the Get Out scene in terms of being locked in the memory um, and subconsciousness. People are being liking it to the uh, the symbolism of 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 people of slaves running for freedom, but I saw it. Uh, I've been watching it uh, numerous days since you since you posted it to to us um, numerous times a day. I saw it as there was a question of where is he running to, and it leaves a question to the audience as to well, what is the point of all our work around trying to tackle violence, uh, trying to tackle poverty, the overrepresentation of of people in poverty, um, in, in, of from certain communities. You had you know the beginning that the the nice percent of the, of the video uh, before you get to the running scene is this um, is this excellent song and and video. But with a what what I felt was you know a background which was whitewashed. It all, as the video progresses, you get almost a feel like it's like a prison. And again, I think it was a statement around how uh, the the amount of uh, of intake of black people in the prison system in America, um, particularly when you compare it to like ed- education as well. Because you had the you had the dancers dressed in school uniforms. So as the as the as the uh, the music video was progressing, you con- I I was constantly asking a question. So what is the point of all our work? What is you know we we can place our personal experiences within the kind of historical and, and political context of what is happening around uh, marginalization, oppression, and so on. But what is it that we're actually trying to achieve? And I think it it, it pushes the question back to the likes of us and to, uh, and to uh, social movement out there as well, as in say, well, what are we running towards? What are we actually trying to achieve with our work? And, and so, you know, when you look at the symbolism in the film, um, you know, I, I think there, there's lists of those questions coming out about it even in the lyrics as well i think so i think a lot of the videos haven't paid a lot of the videos that i've been analyzing it haven't paid enough attention to the lyrics as well i think the lyrics are incredibly powerful as well in terms of how the beat changes every time you have the you have a gunshot so you know the idea actually the the, the music starts to go uplifting and then it brings and then glover brings it back down again by actually creating this this very oppressive um uh, you know quick tone of 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 uh, after after every shooting and of course, you know the the, the 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 guitarist at the beginning being handcuffed and shot in the back, was similar to many incidents around the police. Um, and even even things like uh, the lyrics around, you know, grandma get your, grandma told me get your money, black man. And there's been very different interpretations of that. And what I think was quite interesting was the idea of how it linked into what we've been talking about previously, in our, in in terms of film, is how um, certain individuals from marginalized communities are told to perform their otherness. In order to actually gain access to those environments, in terms of how black people are to, told to perform as a black person and try to try to embody all of the dominant um, uh, stereotypical narratives associated with 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 those identities and, and those characteristics, and 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 at the end of it as well, I thought there was a beautiful irony, because yeah, the, there's this there's this question around how people see the violence in in not just in America but across. Um, you know, across the globe, and how we quickly move on. You know, once we've seen that, we don't, you know, we don't really pay attention to it because of our bite-sized culture around news and television. But what I thought was a kind of beautiful irony was that I was watching it on YouTube, and after the four-minute video, I then got YouTube telling me the next video you'll be playing is Taylor Swift or is Lady Lady Gaga. Or maybe that's just a reflection of my musical choices. But what it, <laughs> but what it was trying to reinforce was how you know. You were watching this, and I was absorbed by it. I was, I was having all these frantic thoughts around the issues that we were that we've been discussing. But then I was reminded at the end of the video, I'm watching this through a, through an internet company, which is which has reinforced this this culture of watch for three minutes, move on to something else, don't question anything, be absorbed by the culture industry. And I thought there was um, you know, there was something beautiful in that kind of the irony of that as well. 
In many ways, we've gone full circle in our conversation. We began discussing the merits of Panther, and now we're here with Childish Gambino. For me, this is a video that speaks to the Black Lives Matter uh, perspective in America, the the Michael Eric Dyson, the Tahanasi Coates, the idea that that there are all these problems that Black people have to to confront, and of course, one of the the, the more terrible ones is this issue of gun violence. Let me give you, uh, Paul, the last word. Any any thoughts to add on the impact, the cultural impact of this of this uh, video? Yeah, I think, again, the, the best thing to me is, is there's all these videos of white people watching it. Uh, have you seen them? There's lots of people sort of being shown it or white people and they're reacting to it, which is just fantastic. Uh, again, I, I think it's, hopefully it's longer term significance will be in what they do next, you know, because I think it is, it's an impact piece in that three minute or 15 second cultural thing. And, the, and it's about the impact that it will have on something on someone like Donald Glover making who has a desire to make an impact because you've got lots of uh, kind of major American black stars such as Damon Wayne's, the Wayne the Wayne's brothers, and and also Oprah Renfe, and they've had their moments and they've done that, but I don't think that they've ever really delivered that that follow on from it in any consistent and coherent way, and I hope that this creates Donald Glover as the man to do that and make a true significant change in America and here and in Europe because I think we have just as many problems that just don't involve them as many guns, uh, and and actually and. It, I think that closing scene to me, because uh, I get all that Miro said, but actually, if you are in this fight, you are always running. And, and you're running away from them and you're running forward to the future. And that, in a way, symbolises what, what this podcast is, is what you do, what you do, what you do, what we do. And actually, you know, that's it's a war and it's a battle and it's quite tiring and you wish it wasn't like that, but actually we're running away from them and you've got to keep going, uh, even if it is occasionally with a terrified face. All right, then. Um, finally, then, a rating. Uh, we'll start with you, Francine. Childish Gambino, This Is America, what does it deserve? Oh, I'll give it ten. <laughs> Miro? I'll give it eight. I'll give it ten. Uh, for me, I, I thought the song was terrible. I mean, it's very, it's very maybe I'm showing my age here, but I, I think you the video is absolutely brilliant. But the <laughs> music glitch, just, I just thought it was terrible. All right, uh, a question to all of you. Uh, have you seen, watched, or read anything that you can share? Miro, we'll go with you first. Uh, well, I, I've been consumed with trying to finish my PhD, so most of my, the most of the stuff I am reading is is... is, is is, I don't even understand it. <laughs> Let me be able to talk about it and share it with other people. What I have been reading is light entertainment on my off on I'm not working the page too, um, which I think is 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 a, a is a reflection. Even though it's written many many years ago, I think it was fifties or something. Um, I've been reading Invisible Man by Ralph Ellison um, around you know the the, the the you know the story of of somebody going through America, going through the social classes and the systems and trying to navigate through that um and uh, also in terms of just, not, just as a side point charles gambino one of his other videos i think it's something like something of the navigator story of the navigator or something um is i think is, is a really really interesting piece to watch as well uh, in relation to what we've been talking about but no invisible man is something that i've been reading and i think it's even though it was published i think in 1952 um it's it's again it reinforces that issue of you can look back through history and pick out some of the key issues because some of the key themes affecting uh, social groups. And it's very uh, important and somewhat easy to then actually base it in the contemporary society that you find yourself in. And it reinforced that kind of questioning around how, how do we measure progress? How do we create progress? How do we recognize that actually what we're doing is, is moving towards some sort of emancipation? Um, and as a pessimist, reading Invisible Man and seeing the social injustices faced by the main character is refreshing to a certain extent because I realise that actually there is still a long way to go and that we need more people to get involved in it. Paul? 
Uh, well, I'd just say The Invisible Man is absolutely one of the great 20th century novels. It's, it is a true masterpiece, and if you haven't read it, you need to read it, uh, along with Confederacy of Dunces by John Kennedy Toole, which is another uh, great American novel. Uh, English novels tend to be a bit clever and shit, so I'd stick to reading American literature if I were you. Uh, uh, but I would say one thing I'm watching is, is comedy, and actually I think American sitcoms are very good at... Uh, both challenging in, in, in a kind of light, simplistic ways, but they're doing it, actually, of of that notion of community and difference. Interestingly, Donald Glover started in a sitcom called Community, which was actually quite good, finished a while ago. But even something like uh, America Ferrara in uh, Superstore is quite good. And then one that's a bit more challenging is Atlanta, which is on in Britain at the moment on BBC Two. But equally, I think the second series has just ended in America. I, I, I'd recommend that because I think he's doing some some really good, challenging, clever, witty, intelligent, articulate and insightful uh, content uh, that, that's really, really good. And lastly to you, Francine, last but not least. So well, we're talking already a lot about having to fight against the system and, and the, the imposing powers. And in a sense, there is a very optimistic film by an Icelandic director, which I saw in Cannes. The director is called Benedict Erlingsson. Son, and the film is called A Woman at War, and a very quirky woman who is literally fighting the over-dominant structures of society so that um, she's trying to protect the natural heritage of Iceland. So she keeps going around doing environmental crusades. And it's just such an uplifting film, and it's so positive about um, how we can fight big structures and get somewhere um, and it's done with such a great sense of humour there's, um, there's an Icelandic brass band there's a Ukrainian choir and so music is omnipresent in this film and that's also very powerful in terms of backing up the message it won a prize um, in Cannes as well um, from the Society for the Authors and Directors and it was also a Euromash supported film so it's co-production between Iceland, France and Ukraine so when it comes out I completely recommend you watch A Woman at War because it just makes you feel that we can win some of these battles that we're fighting against oppressive structures. Allow me to share my recommendation. May 19th was the uh, or is the birthday of Malcolm X and so that had me thinking about his legacy particularly as this year was the 50th anniversary of the murder of Martin Luther King and this this debate between a gradualist approach and a revolutionary approach, I don't know if that's necessarily true, but the gradualist versus an incendiary approach still continues 50 years on. In thinking about Malcolm X and his legacy, I, I've been reading for some time a book um, by Farhad Croche Kavar. It's a, a book written in French called Prisons in France, which is basically telling the story about what is happening in French prisons, of course, about violence, radicalization, but also this relationship between prisoners and uh, prison officers. It's an excellent book. I'm making my way very uh, slowly through it, but it's, it's definitely worth a read if it's uh, translated into English. Francine Raveny, Miro Griffiths, Paul Dart, thank you very much for your time today. Hopefully we'll see you again. Thank you, Dan.